This picture is a picture of me three years ago. I was an ordinary boy in an ordinary place. However, I was not that happy back then because I was missing something. I was missing a gear that was missing from the big piece of robot that was going to complete myself. And guess what that was? It was love. A force that drives around throughout our society. Something that we wouldn't have what we have today without it. Because at the end of it, everybody needs it. Now, I had my first love about two years ago. It was for, well, it was for someone at school. Is she here? She's not. <laughs> now, I remembered myself. It was mid-February, which was a, a time of the year. That is just that time of the year that some people look forward to, some don't. I, was, I remembered myself. I was sitting down at a stairway with my, a bunch of my friends. We were sitting down there, they were all singing, laughing, and doing some loads of stuff. Except for me. I was, in fact, I was shaking. I was nervous of something. Just like how, how I feel right now. I'm, I was just nervous. <laughs> and I was shaking. My hands, my left hand was shaking, my right hand was shaking, and so was the flower that I was holding in my hand. Now, minutes later, across the, the place, someone walked past. It was not just anybody. It was the person I was willing to give the flower to. Now, my mind was like, just hurry up already and get your body across and, you know, give the flower to her. But my legs, my legs were frozen. <laughs> it was a conflict between my body, whether I should actually move or whether I should just stay there. At the end, I actually went over and actually handed the girl the flower and on that day, I think it felt really good because eventually I actually got something off my nerves, something I really wanted to do. But what was it that actually drove me to do such a heroic thing? <laughs> well, kind of. For, for me at that time, it was something really brave. So. But what was it actually? It was love because without it, I would probably not have enough courage to have gone up there and actually gave the flower. Now, probably about some time later, I had my second love. Second love, <laughs> yes. Well, you can love something more, more than one thing at a time, couldn't you? <laughs> no, but it wasn't for someone this time. It was for something else. I was sitting in a class, it was my humanities class. At that time we were doing history, French Revolution. A lot of people probably know about French Revolution, probably know what happened. Now my teacher walked in and he said he was going to show us a video. Well I never had high hopes for his video because I kind of knew what it was like. But as soon as he did show the video, he started to press play. I felt something that was flying around the room. Something was going on in here. It was a sound. It was a sound of music. That went. 
I used to rule the world. Seas would rise when I gave the word. Now in the morning I sleep alone. Sweep the streets that I used to own. Anyone want to sing along? It's kind of lonely up here. I'm going to the hook now. Well, that was it. <laughs> By the way, the song was called Viva La Vida. I'm going to credit the original artist a bit. Maybe he might make a few extra million dollars in the album. Maybe he can share some to me. But after I heard that song, four minutes long, which I would have played the whole thing without the time limit, <laughs> after the song, I was frozen again. I was frozen this time because of the song. It was something I fell in love with, and it felt amazing. And now, well, sometime later, now I can admit that I actually fall in love with music. I know more what it is actually all about. I have interest in it. I'm not necessarily good at it, you can probably judge, <laughs> but I still enjoy it. And I actually knew more about the French Revolution now because there's something actually inspiring me. So every time I look over my history, his homework, I would just open this song at the same time. I still got to see in history. <laughs> but that was just two of my stories. There's thousands of stories out there, millions. Everyone in here probably has their own story about love to tell. You can probably turn to your left, turn to your right, maybe have you introduce yourself to the other, your neighbor. You can probably ask them what they love as well. Take this, take this boy. He's called Jalen Fong. He's 13 years old, and he fights with cancer and leukemia. He recovered because of his love for baseball. Or a lot of people probably recognize the next one. This young lady who have very recently won a very big tournament, badminton tournament. She started badminton at the age of four, a very young age. In fact, was it for? I'm not sure. But at a very young age. And she now is the youngest person to have ever won the competition. Or a story, another story of a, a father who traveled thousands of miles to find his beloved son. And if you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about finding Nemo. <laughs> it's still a very good story, though, a very good storyline about what a parent can give to you. And at the event today as well, we're going to hear loads of stories about what people love. There'll probably be more people coming up about to show their love for music. Maybe some people have love for something else. I know someone really likes psychology and he's going to be coming up and doing this talk. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And so, when you go home, just think to yourself, what is it that you love? What is it that you're passionate about? Or maybe who your crush is. And when you do realize, you'll know how important love is to you and how much it has changed your life and how much all of our society would not be able to live without it. So ask yourself, where is the love? Thank you very much.